My name is Manfred Helber and I'm a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional in the category Cloud and Data Center. I'm not really a fan of comparing competing solutions because each solution usually has its, its unique focus and its unique values. But why do I provide this session to you, this video to you, where I'm comparing, okay, I will not really compare, I will show you what's exclusive to Azure Stack HCI. And this exclusiveness is your key to success if you are in a competing scenario with our other HCI solutions in the market. So what's identical or similar to each HCI solution is the idea how it works. On the left hand side in this picture, in this slide, we can see a traditional stack with SAN systems, with storage fabric switches, with our hypervisor systems. We have additionally to the hypervisor systems, network appliances, traditional switches. In a hyperconverged stack, we trust on industry standard servers and on standard switches. And these powerful industry standard leading technology is combined with a powerful software stack. And now it depends on the capabilities, depending on which software stack you are deciding for. There are several HCI solutions in the market that are competing with each, each other. They have some different specific requirements. They have different capabilities. We now want to focus on the exclusive features in Azure Stack HCI. What makes Azure Stack HCI so unique? The first thing is Hyper-V. Yes, there are HCI solutions in the market that also use Hyper-V as a hypervisor, but Microsoft only focuses on Hyper-V. So there are no third-party hypervisors. There are no trade-offs because trying to get compatibility to, you, to other hypervisors. We have the full and best compatibility with Hyper-V. Hyper-V is part of Azure Stack HCI and Hyper-V as an hypervisor provides best compatibility for sure to the Microsoft operating systems, latest Windows client and Windows Server, for sure also Windows 11, here we can see Windows 10, but also to previous versions of Windows Server, even if they are already and of support in the traditional life cycle, because as we have learned in a previous module, Azure Stack HCI provides extended security updates for our workload if we need this. And so Windows Server 2008 is actually still supported there because of the extended security updates. What's important to know Hyper-V is also a perfect platform for Linux workloads with Red Hat, SUSE, Ubuntu, Debian, Oracle, CentOS. This means to focus on Hyper-V as an hypervisor does not mean that you have to take any compromise in um, regarding the workload you want to run there. And we are absolutely flexible in the management tools we use. The Windows Admin Center is the preferred tool we have seen in several live demos in previous videos. But we can also use the PowerShell if we prefer the scripting. We can use the traditional tools like Hyper-V Manager. And for sure, there's also available a System Center Virtual Machine Manager, but this is an additional license we require. So the important message is for you. Please also get in touch with Hyper-V because this is the hypervisor for Microsoft. And Hyper-V is not only a hypervisor for 
virtualization host on premises for a cluster, Hyper-V is everywhere in the Microsoft ecosystem. Hyper-V is in the Windows client, Windows 10 and Windows 11 to run is to, to use it as Hyper-V to virtualize workloads, but it's also used to provide the virtualization based security in the client. For sure, we have Hyper-V in the ver Windows server in each edition. Essentials, standard and data center. We have Hyper-V in Azure Stack HCI, and we have Hyper-V in the Microsoft Azure data center. So the hypervisor for the Azure workloads in the Azure data center is Hyper-V. No other hypervisor. Yes, you can get other hypervisors in Azure if you have the request. You say, I want another third party hypervisor for my virtual machine workload. You can also get this third party hypervisor in Azure but only by request and only for your workload. The Microsoft Azure services like Azure Virtual Desktop, like Azure Virtual Machines, they all run on Hyper-V natively. This means Hyper-V is the hypervisor with the largest installed base worldwide because of this huge data centers when we also bring into this comparison the Azure data centers. And so we can be sure that Hyper-V will be developed and there will be a lot of investments into Hyper-V in future versions that will also provide it to you when you run Azure Stack HCI on premises. The commitment from Microsoft is to bring all the new features also to Azure Stack HCI and some of them to Hyper-V on Windows Server. So there are different functionalities between the different Hyper-V platforms. The most powerful for sure is Azure in the public data centers and Azure in combination with Azure Stack HCI. What also unique to Azure Stack HCI is the partner ecosystem. There are other hyperconverged infrastructure solutions in the market where you find a few partners with certified solutions. Here you can see the huge partner ecosystem with all the Microsoft partners that are providing Azure Stack HCI certified solutions. And as I mentioned in one of the previous presentations, this Azure Stack HCI certified solutions are not only provided by these partners, but they are also tested and validated. These videos are presented to you by Primeline Solutions, a partner that has several certified solutions for Azure Stack HCI in the Azure Stack HCI catalog. And each partner that wants to provide certified solutions has to validate these solutions based on a standardized test by Microsoft. It's called the Private Cloud Simulator. And this test suite stresses the Azure Stack HCI configuration for several days to ensure that it will work well and perfectly at the customer location. Here we see a page from the Azure Stack HCI catalog with the certified sol solutions from Primeline Solutions. And all these systems are completely tested. So the message behind the partner ecosystem is you have a broad varied variety of choice. You have a lot of configurations. So you have a huge flexibility but all the configurations are tested and validated based on a standardized process. And this standardization is important for me because every HCI solutions in the market, the trusts on industry standard hardware needs the standardization to ensure that the solution will work well when the customer implements it. This does not mean that we cannot 
choose different configuration options because this is the next advantage of Azure Stack HCI. We have a broad variety of supported hardware. And what's great about the supported hardware, the components are certified and validated, but we can choose another CPU. We can choose more or less memory. We have some minimum requirements, but within this minimum and maximum requirements, we can deal with this amount of resources. We can choose the drives. We can choose the networking. We have different support options for networking. We recommend RDMA. We can decide for iWarp or Rocky. It depends on our needs. What's great about this hardware support, Microsoft is always on the leading edge for what is supported. As soon as Intel released the Obtain technology, Microsoft provided the support in the Azure Stack HCI solutions. We have support for NVMe drives, RDMA capable, capable networking adapters from the first version. And this is the advantage again to use industry standard components because in the industry standard components, we usually have early access to these new technologies and we have best support for these new features. So hardware support, also a unique thing in Azure Stack HCI and the Azure Stack ecosystem. Also unique, as far as I know it, I've never seen other numbers from other HCI solutions in the market. What's unique to Azure Stick HCI is the performance. Here you see values that are already more than three years in the past. Microsoft had a performance record in an Azure Stick HCI configuration with 12 nodes. It was a 12 node configuration. If you attended the previous video modules with the um, basics about Azure Stack HCI and the hardware requirements, you know that we need minimum two nodes. We can have maximum 16 nodes in a cluster. And in this 12 node configuration, we had nearly minimum, we had nearly 14 million IOPS per second. This is a huge number. The performance record before was two years older, it was from 2016, I think so. And it was 1 million IOPS with a four node cluster. And as far as I know, this 1 million IOPS are not really beat until today. And this 14 million IOPS also not. So with Azure Stack HCI, you can trust in a perfect performance depending on the configuration. This is what's important. You must configure everything correct and accordingly to ensure to be able to consume this performance. The hardware OEMs and providers provide this functionality that from the technical perspective to enable you to provide this IOPS records also at your customer site. So far, we talked about the HCI core components. Here, performance record for the software stack. We learned the name for the software stack is storage spaces direct for the software defined storage. We talked about Hyper-V, about management, about the hardware ecosystem. Now let's come to some technologies that are really absolutely nowhere else available and that are 100% exclusive to Azure Stack HCI, not only today, but also in the future. The performance record we have seen before maybe could be beaten someone with the other solution. Maybe there could be an hypervisor competing to Hyper-V with a larger installation base. Maybe an HCI um, vendor could offer an even larger ecosystem we actually have in Azure Stack HCI. This could happen in the future. But Azure Stack HCI, this could happen. It didn't happen till now. 
So actually Microsoft is at all these things at the leading, leading point here where we have the absolute best ecosystem, the best hypervisor, the best performance. But what's really exclusive, and this will not change today, not tomorrow, and not in the future, we have the Azure integration. So Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft Azure. Maybe your customer will say, okay, I didn't work with Azure till now. Where is my advantage that Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft Azure? The big advantage is, and we also talked about this in the module about Azure Stack HCI basics, that with Azure Stack HCI, we are able to run Azure workloads in our on-premises data center. This means in the past, when we were talking about Azure, the customer always had to keep in mind, okay, if I want to put a workload to Azure, the workload will leave my own data center and will run in the Azure global data centers in the future, or maybe in one of the regional data centers. With Azure Stack HCI, now we are able to bring Azure workloads to on-premises. So with Azure Stack HCI, now you can have the Azure workload, not every Azure workload, but some Azure workloads on-premises in your data center. So if you decide now for Azure workloads, this means you can decide if you want to run this workload in the public Azure data center, or on-premises on your Azure Stack HCI solution. And we have learned in the video about the hardware requirements, we can start very small with a two-node cluster. In my live demo, in the module about Azure Virtual Desktop, I used a very small entry-level two-node physical cluster to showcase this. And we can scale up to 60 nodes in a cluster, and we can have several of these clusters and run Azure workloads and benefits there. Today, we already know about, or we can already use benefits like the Azure edition. We can already use the extended security updates, the pay as you go option. This is already available in the Azure Stack HCI on premises. We have already the capability to run Azure Kubernetes services. To be honest, we also can run Azure Kubernetes services on Windows Server and traditional clusters. But the Azure edition, the free extended security updates and the pay as you go is exclusive to the public Azure data centers and to Azure Stack HCI. We have announcements about additional platform as a services like managed SQL Server and app services and we have the preview where we had a dedicated video module about for Azure Virtual Desktop and Azure Virtual Desktop is one of the first great new services I'm addressing when I'm focusing on this topic Azure Stack HCI is Microsoft Azure and Azure Stack HCI will provide more and more Azure services for on-premises. We also we'll see a lot of Azure management and governance functionalities for Azure Stack HCI. So we heard about the monitoring. We had a dedicated video module about monitoring Azure Stack HCI with Azure Monitor. Yes, Azure Monitor can also be used to monitor Windows Server on traditional Hyper-V, but the management in the Azure portal with the deep integration without leaving the portal this will be exclusive to the Azure only world, so also to the Azure Stack HCI. And in Azure, we have something it's called Azure Auto Manage to automatically um, yeah, provide maintenance tasks to your machines. This will also be provided in Azure Stack HCI. And we had modules where we talked about disaster recovery, and we will see more and more of this Azure integration scenarios for Azure Stack HCI. And the infrastructure innovations are also exclusive to Azure Stack HCI. 
Microsoft will not bring these innovations they have in Azure to any other competing solution. And for sure, Microsoft also said they will not bring all of these features to Hyper-V on Windows Server. Maybe some of them, but the focus will be to provide all these Azure exclusive benefits Microsoft uses and takes advantage from in the Azure data centers, also on premises. We already have the thin provisioning for volumes. We already have the network ATC. We already have the secured core server capabilities. We have the dynamic CPU compatibility. We have the C GPUs um, with uh, clustered virtual machines. And we are in the final steps for providing kernel soft reboot for Azure Stack HCI solutions in the market. So if your customers are thinking about using some of Azure services and they want to consume them on premises, then Azure Stack HCI is the best and only solution that can provide this because Azure Stack HCI is registered in Microsoft Azure and so Azure Stack HCI is part of the Azure ecosystem. We have seen this in the video module about registering Azure Stack HCI with Microsoft Azure and configuring Azure Arc. Then it explains several times that we have to register our Azure Stack HCI solution to Microsoft Azure to unlock the full capabilities, especially this Azure exclusive features. But if we have a disconnectivity regarding Azure, because if, of some network outages or limitations, we will not see any outages on our locally provided services. So our volumes keep accessible, our virtual machines keep up and running. For sure, when I'm disconnected, I cannot use the uh, features I'm consuming in the Azure data center, but my local workload on Azure Stack HCI keeps up and running. So I have again to focus on the information that Azure Stack HCI also runs if our connectivity is not available 24 hours a day and seven days a week, but Azure Stack HCI is not usable in completely disconnected scenarios. So we need a connectivity to the Azure data centers minimum once every 30 days. Usually we will have a connectivity on a regular basis because you will use things like Azure Monitor, Azure Backup and so on. So if you are only focusing on the HCI part, then we are competing with the functionalities and techniques around partner ecosystem, around Hyper-V, around scalability, around compatibility and performance. When you are thinking about future workloads in real hybrid worlds, then Azure Stack HCI is the best choice for you that provides you all this functionality for your on-premises data center. And what you can hear at every public Microsoft event, that more and more Azure workloads will come to Azure Stack HCI. So this is not the final feature set we see here. So these are the first steps. So your decision to use Azure Stack HCI in my point of view, will be a good investment also for the future because we will see a lot of additional services 